Hi everyone. So for the second episode of Plastic Talks, I figured I would go over polycarbonate. It's plastic I've used quite a bit. It's incredibly tough. It is a thermoplastic that is easy to machine and fabricate. Um, I'll show you some samples of things that I've worked with. This was a test when I first got a piece of it from work where I beat the crap out of it, me and a few friends, and I actually broke a sword off inside of it. And I knew that this was used for, you know, bulletproof glass and that sort of thing, but I really wanted to put it to the test with hammers and knives, and then I eventually started incorporating it into actual bulletproof plates, and it held up remarkably well. So. As with these plastic talks, I'm not really going to give you all the mechanical information that's out there and readily available. You can easily re research this. This is more of answering five questions on why you should use it, why you should maybe invest in some material to help form it, and what it would be best used in. So, so the properties, like I said, it's incredibly tough. Um, it's virtually unbreakable. Like for a transparent plastic, you wouldn't necessarily assume that it would be um, most people think of acrylic which can shatter like glass but polycarbonate does not do that and in fact it's one of the highest rated um, for the notch impact tests if you can see in this graph right here and most grades just you can bend it but it will not break you can just continue to fold it over and it won't just shatter like acrylic or glass will however it is prone to being scratched does not scratch resistant or not that high depending on the grade you get so often it's coated with another type of transparent plastic often acrylic to help resist scratches that's one thing that acrylic has on or up on it it also can absorb water so if you do get into forming it make sure to give it a good dry cycle at a lower temperature that'll make it a lot easier to work with and you won't have um, the rippling effects that you'll get from it um, holding too much mo moisture, unlike high density polyethylene, which I've done a little bit on previous videos with plates, this can absorb water where that does not at all. Um, the forming temperature, if you are thermoforming it, you know, vacuum forming it onto it, which is how I got that domed shape. This was a flat piece that I was able to I actually drape mold molded this so I heated up to um, 400 or 350 degrees to 400 is the working temperature that's the other thing it's fairly high in heat resistance which is nice uh, I don't know about injection molding temperatures because honestly I've never injection molded it so I just know that if you get it up to 350 it'll start to ripple across it and start to sag slowly it's very stiff though it doesn't sag like styrene and ABS where that real quickly once you get it into its working temperature you'll notice but you can just heat it up and place it on a mold and it will form and drape over it at around 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit um, let's see it's very transparent most grades are uh, with only the it's naturally transparent when they form it uh, they don't have to do anything special to make it non-transparent. Often they'll add dyes though for different things. If you look on, if you're interested in the recycle number, it's number seven and denoted as other. So it doesn't have its own special um, rating like high density does, high density polyethylene does, which is number two. It's number seven, along with other types of plastics that are uh, not as commonly found. Um, my main focus of using it was for the fact that it is transparent and used in bulletproof glass. I was interested in for face masks and that sort of thing because of how incredibly tough and um, energy absorbent it is. But uh, I started incorporating it into plate designs like this one right here, which it the base inside of it is uh, polycarbonate and it's wrapped in Kevlar with epoxy resin. So it does hold resin pretty well, and you don't have to worry about it just delamming off. It can be sanded and sawed with hand tools. However, I would it can chip, and because it can scratch, I would probably use like an acrylic saw blade. But you can work it. Here's a few pieces that I was cutting down to make smaller plates, and 
it starts to kind of burn and bubble and I had no problems with it chipping and this was just with the standard uh, salt blade and an air saw but I've even used a hand saw just to see and I didn't really have too many problems you know small teeth sharp that sort of thing it'll cut through it you just might have to work a little bit extra hard because it is real tough stuff to cut through um let's see it, it, why would you want to use this um the, if you want high strength you know toughness um, mechanically I don't know I've never incorporated it as a support thing I know that like most plastics it can have problems with creep right so it can kind of stretch and bow over time compared to metal you know a lot of material undergoes creep of some sort but uh, plastics in general often unless they're made specifically not to will experience creep but you can form it so so easily with various techniques that it's worth it and I would still see it being more um, resistant to creep than high density polyethylene and styrene and maybe even ABS so I've never like I said use it for mechanical stuff so do your research if you're looking at it for a structural piece but it's used in bulletproof glass and riot shields and bulletproof armor which is what I've been using it for so that's my main focus of it now where to find it it's very expensive it's full sheets of it like I've got over here against the wall those will be riot shields and the like they cost a pretty penny depending on the thickness and the grade those are actual shatter resistant and one or two of them are actually ballistic resist or ballistic grades okay once you start buying those they're very costly now all the grades of polycarbonate are quite tough but I found a great website that sells uh, cutoffs so when they cut for various dealers and whatnot to length they will save back those and instead of just pitching it they will have pieces that are like this shape and longer sometimes narrower pieces sometimes with just like a circle cut out of it and they'll have it just like and they sell it to you by the pound which is awesome if you're just doing small you know like glasses or small windows and stuff like that you know you wouldn't really get a full window out of it but for smaller pieces and because I want to turn this into like articulated plate because how easy it is to form with heat you can pick it up at a website called Freckleface. I'll put the link down in the description if you're interested in finding it. But a simple Google search and you'll be able to find it everywhere. I mean, most plastic dealers carry it. But if you're looking for some place close by, depending on where you live, now this is, I live in an, an industrial rich place in Northern Indiana. So it's very easy to find various industries. Uh, bus manufacturers, often use it as um, like for um, for I'm trying to think the exact term for the buses that they use in correctional facilities okay that's where I got a lot of these cutoffs and if you just ask them or a plastic manufacturer close by that might work with this stuff you can go up to them and ask for their cutoffs or their damaged goods that sometimes they don't ship back and they'll just throw them in the dumpster and they'll let you have them but I would check out Freckleface is a good website for these smaller pieces like this and you'll get a lot of use out of it for fairly cheap like 20 or 30 bucks for like, like 12 pounds of the stuff and they have different like 5 pound 12 pound or 10 pound and 20 pound um, boxes that they just fill up with different so you'll never know exactly what you're gonna get but you'll still get quite a bit of it so that's all I have to really say about polycarbonate you're gonna see it a lot in these upcoming videos I'm working on riot shields it'll be incorporated into various pieces of armor and I just can't stress enough the fact that it's you can sand it you can saw it with simple saw blades you can even at 450 degrees you can mold it in your oven without even a vacuum you can drape mold it I've done it that's like I said how that one was done so it's definitely something to look into even if it is slightly tougher on the temperature and a little bit harder to get a hold of because of the cost but it'll be well worth it so thank you guys and um, 
If you have any other plastics you would like me to review or talk about, any resins, please send your suggestions to me and I will make a video about it. And of course, the projects are coming up, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. And if you do, please like, share, and subscribe to these videos. Thanks, guys.